Hello dear students, welcome back again to Chen Moe's biology channel. So today we are here with the second part of food production and management lesson. So today's episode is green revolution and white revolution. So let's get started without further delay that what we are going to learn in this lesson. Learning objectives of today's lesson are green revolution. So what is green revolution? Uh, what is the main points of green revolutions we will study today? We will also study about animal husbandry and white revolution and we will only study about the meat providing livestock today. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe to my channel because there are yet to come many important uh, parts of this lesson that I'll be teaching in the next few episodes. So uh, if you are subscribing to my channel, you will get the updates as soon as I upload the lesson. So stay tuned, stay subscribed to my channel. So let's get started. So what is green revolution? So green revolution, it was actually, it refers to a series of research work and development work in the field of uh, this uh, agriculture. So it was, uh, um, it was uh, started from 1940 and it completed in 1960s. So what was the aim of this one? So the main aim of this was the agricultural productivity was to be increased greatly due to agronomic technologies, right? So the aim of the program was to, to increase the food production. So uh, it was first initiated by Dr. Norman Borlaug. So it, he was an American biologist. So he started to um, create high yielding varieties of cereals, right? So, but gradually using many modern machines and chemical fertilizers to boost the agricultural procedure. So gradually this uh, led to our scientist, Dr. M.S. Swaminathan. You can see his picture here. He is MS, Dr. M.S. Swaminathan. So he, what did he do? Under his guidance, this high yielding disease resistant varieties of wheat and rice were produced. So he started to produce high yielding disease resistant varieties of mainly first rice and wheat. Uh, these two uh, were produced. Okay. So his aim was to increase the global food production and in, develop, in a developing nations such as India. So we, ha, we were lagging far behind other nations in the food production. So uh, by new modern machines, modern techniques, by uh, new uh, fertilizers and all, he wanted to increase the productivity. So the develop, as we were developing nation, our food production started to improve. And he introduced this high yielding disease resistant varieties of um, crops uh, start initially he started from rice and wheat right so from starving nation in 1967 to a food exploring nation in 1978 India progressed a lot under this uh, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan and this was called the green revolution so what were the main points of green revolution that high yielding uh, uh, disease resistance crops should be produced in a small span of time short span of time Use of manures, fertilizers and chemicals uh, should be used in cultivation of crops. Machines were introduced. Okay, fertilizers uh, were used, fertilizers were used and machines were introduced. Okay, so machines, main uh, new farming machines like tractors, harvesters. So machines were started to be introduced like tractors, harvesters and all. Okay. And so these machines and these fertilizers, what they did, they improved the quality of uh, uh, amount and quality of food production. And they also improved the storing facility after harvesting the storage facilities, marketing facilities and um, all uh, throughout what all was happening for irrigation purpose, all was improved a lot. So this was the main motto of Green Revolution to improve the full process of agricultural uh, productivity through agronomic technology. So it was improved. So agricultural productivity increased greatly due to agronomic technology. So it uh, included fertilizers, it included mach machines like tractors, harvesters and all. It included, um, you know, we can say that uh, several storage facilities, marketing facilities all were introduced. So now after this, we will move on to animal husbandry. Animal husbandry. So what is animal husbandry? So first of all, we should know that animals are useful to humans in many ways. So some animals we are keeping as pets. Okay, some are kept as pets. 
some are being used for food and some are giving us fiber okay so animals are being used in many ways some are giving us food some are uh, being kept as pets and some are giving us fiber so all animals uh, by uh, used domesticated by human beings for their usefulness constitute of this livestock so whatever uh, human beings are domesticating for their usefulness they constitute of this livestock and the branch of agricultural science that deals with the feeding shelter health and breeding of this livestock is called animal husbandry so whatever animals we all are domesticating for the purpose of food for the purpose of fiber so these all there is a process of feeding these animals giving shelter to these animals maintaining their proper health and breeding of this livestock so this is uh, all under animal husbandry right so there are several uh, milk yielding animals also those are called milch animals so milk yielding animals are called milch animals meat and egg yielding animals are also there work animals or draught animals are also there draught animals means those who are doing hard work uh, you know some are working in the fields and also those who are doing hard work they are called draught animals now there are hide wool and leather yielding animals also so there are several categories under this animal husbandry okay and animals yielding other products also so today we will be taking only a few of these types of animals so stay tuned and stay subscribed to all, to my channel so that you can get to know about all these types of Uh, animals which i'll be dealing with in the next episodes so let's continue with this one now what is the importance of animal husbandry the importance of animal husbandry is it helps in rearing high quality milch animals so milch animals are i have told earlier they are all milk producing animals which increases the milk production so these are all milch animals helps in rearing the high yielding hens which increases the egg production so high yielding hens uh, which are increasing the egg production so here in milch animals milk production is increased in uh, this animals the egg production is increased and helps in high yielding animals which increases the meat production also so these are all uh, meat producing animals right so from uh, them only uh we are consuming meat right so um, now this is the main importance of animal husbandry that why we are uh, rearing we are giving them shelter food and uh, for our uh, food for our fiber for uh, everything what we need we are generally uh, uh, this branch of agricultural science we are rearing them we are breeding them we are feeding them because uh, we want to get some important thing benefits from them okay so milk animals from them we are getting milk from this hen and all we are getting eggs as well as meat and from pig from this cow and from other goat and all sheep so they are all meat yielding animals so now we will categorize this animals and we will look into the other important factors of animal husbandry so here we are seeing in the milch animals the breeds of cows right so first we will see the first category is the draught breeds the second one is the dual purpose breed and the third ones are the dairy breeds so what are draught breeds so we can say that draught breeds are actually uh, whose males are primarily used for uh, drawing bullock carts plowing land and transporting materials from one place to another but in this case this breeds the female they are yielding less milk so the milk in this category is less now dual purpose breeds are they are quite good milk yielders also so these are yielding quite good quality of milk okay so their milk is of good quality and their bullocks are uh, generally they are castrated bulls and they are good for draught purposes also and uh, generally these are uh, the breeds of haryana and uh, dangi and uh, tharparkar and uh, we can say that their females are good milk yielders so they are called dual purpose breeds so they are having both the work they can do well they are uh, working as draught animals also and they are yielding good uh, quality milk also right so first one was only draught breed they were having less milk production second was dual purpose breeds and third one was the dairy breed so what does this dairy breed refer to that is high milk yielders and their bullocks are 
poor for drought purposes these dairy breeds they are actually high milk yielders these are high milk yielders and their bullocks are um, they are very much poor in drought purposes so the drought purposes they are very poor so they are not able to uh, pull the bullock carts not plowing the land and all so they are poor in uh, drought purposes right so uh, this is about the three types of breeds in cows so other than this we can uh, we will go into details about all the other breeds also in india three types of breed of dairy cows are there so first one is the indigenous breed so in this indigenous breed we can see the red sindhi cows and so this is the red sindhi one or sahiwal and gir so these three are under the category of the indigenous breed right so they are under the category of this indigenous breed now we will move on to the next breed exotic breeds so they are mainly the foreign breeds so exotic breeds means these are the foreign breeds and under this the jersey cow is there and uh, this one is the jersey cow they are also holstein frisian and brown swiss these are all exotic breeds that is they are foreign breeds now in this uh, in this uh, exotic breeds only th three cows are there one is jersey one is holstein frisian and another is brown swiss next comes the cross breeds so cross breeds are uh, generally developed by mating the bulls of exotic breeds with the cows of indigenous ones so they are called the cross breeds because the mating is done by the bulls of bulls of exotic breeds so bulls will be from the exotic breeds and the cows will be from the indigenous breeds okay so bulls from exotic breed and uh, cows from the indigenous breed bulls from the exotic breed and cows from the indigenous breed okay so that is that produces the uh, generally this cross breeds are produced from this uh, cross mating so these two examples are of cross breeds curran fries and friesval so these are cross breeds cows so uh, the yield of milk from these improved breeds of cow is uh, two to three times more than the indigenous ones so our our uh, indian breeds that is the indigenous breed their uh, um, milk uh, production is lesser than these cross breeds which are done by the mating of bulls of exotic breed and cow of the indigenous breed okay so this this is having higher two to three times higher milk production so milk production will be higher in this type of cross breed cows but the quality of milk will be always good in our indigenous or our indian breeds so uh, if you are, want to purchase the indian breed cows milk that will be much costlier because the milk production is less in cross breeds the milk is produced in huge amount and the quality of the milk is not as good Uh, uh, having the nutritional value as good as the indian breeds right so did, is it clear to you all so three types of breeds in india indigenous exotic and the cross breeds so cross breeds are producing the highest amount of uh, milk production and they are formed by the bulls of exotic breed plus the cows of indigenous uh, breeds they are being mated and this type of cross breeds are produced now we will move on to buffaloes now next uh, category in milch animal comes the buffaloes okay so buffaloes so the first one there are several uh, uh, breeds of buffalo first one is mura so this this is the this mura category of buffalo so they are mainly original breed of where they are present mainly in haryana and punjab okay they these are the breed from haryana and punjab these buffaloes and they are average annual milk yield is 1800 to 2500 liters so annual yield is this much and the fat content is up to 7% okay so the fat content is up to uh, 7% so these are mainly the important uh, breeds and present in haryana and punjab next comes mehsana so mehsana is also uh, a breed uh, common in gujarat this is a breed in gujarat and it is average milk yield is 1200 to 2500 liters okay so per year these are all per year yield next comes next breed in uh, buffaloes is surti surti is um, it is uh, mainly a native of kaira and vadodara district of gujarat so it is mainly a native of kaira and vadodara district 
and vadodara district of gujarat so it is um, it is yielding how much milk it is yielding mainly 1600 to 1800 liters of milk and uh, the fat content of the milk is fat content is 8 to 10% the fat content is 8 to 10% of the um, fat. this this is having the actually the highest fat content the sutti cow is uh, buffalo sorry the sutti buffalo is having the highest amount of fat content and it is mainly found and it is a native of gujarat and it is mainly found in the kaira and vadodara district of gujarat and mainly it is producing 1600 to 1800 liter of uh, milk is it clear now we will move on to the next category so milk of goat is goats are also milch animals so we have spoken about cows different breeds of cows we have spoken about buffaloes now when it comes to goats we didn't categorize them under different breeds but milk of goat is very nutritious and it's preferred over cow milk but the problem is that the production of goat milk is very much less than that of cows and buffaloes so when we are um, uh, consuming milk in large scale the goat milk is very less very limited you can't reach uh, to all the population with goat milk so it's a limited um, these are limited milk animals so we are concentrating more on cows and buffaloes right so now we will be studying about white revolution what is white revolution so in uh, after the huge success of green revolution Indian government they started a program in 1970 about the uh, they called it operation flood so what is the meaning of operation flood it was a motive of increase in the milk production right so they started increasing the milk production that is they this program resulted in india becoming the largest producer of milk and milk products in the world and hence it is called the white revolution so after this operation flood india became the highest producers of milk and milk products okay so highest producers of milk and milk products in the world of milk and milk products and milk products in the world okay so this led to this white revolution so uh, first in india anand milk union limited so amul you know that right so anand milk um, union limited so that is amul they uh, it was a gujarat um, a cooperative based um, Uh, uh, engine and that drove this mission to a successful height and the main architect of indians wide revolution was mr vergis kurian so this is the mr vergis kurian he was uh, he was the one who was behind this wide revolution and he has been always the driving force in making india one of the largest producers of milk in the world okay so operation flood what did it ensure it ensured that increased milk production a uh, strengthen the farmers dairy farmers income and easy availability of milk at a fair price so this was the main motto so what were the three milk a uh, main motto of this white revolution first one was the increased milk production second one was to this milk should reach everyone at fair price so price should be fixed it should be reaching everyone all over india in a fair price it should not be so costly and the third one it increased the uh, dairy farmers income okay so it increased the dairy farmers income so this all were the important factors of white revolution so is it clear to all of you we have today studied about green revolution important facts of animal husbandry all the breeds of cows and buffaloes and we are ending today's lesson with the white revolution right so this is all for today's episode in the next upcoming video we will be studying in the next class we will study about the meat providing livestock so Uh, if you are having any queries any doubts write in my comment box and please subscribe to my channel and don't skip my videos read them full so that you can get to know the whole lesson properly in a proper manner as per your curriculum and whenever i am updating the next video you'll get the updates if you are subscribing to my channel thank you and goodbye